You are looking almost live at the board that is going to help you solve any subnetting questions Cisco gives you, Chris Bryant gives you, the real world gives you, anybody. And the great thing is there's no complicated memorization here with this chart. I hesitate to even call it a chart because what you're going to do, for those of you totally new to this, when we do these conversions and we do subnetting, we've got to have this little row of numbers to work with. And if this is totally new to you, instead of trying to memorize it from left to right, I'll tell you what helped me when I started with it, is I started at the right-hand side and just doubled the number seven times. That's it. Because I'm going to tell you point blank, if you can add, you can subtract, and you can do that, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, you can solve any subnetting question anybody gives you, whether it's me, practice exam, Cisco, anybody else in the world. And it all starts with the two fundamental skills we're going to practice first, and that's converting a binary figure to decimal. And the one we're going to start with is, con uh, excuse me, converting a decimal to a binary string. And you could be given one decimal. You could be given a dotted decimal IP address, like the ones we've been looking at, 2111 and so forth. But the conversions are exactly the same. Now I'm going to explain how we do it first very briefly. And you might say, okay, I think I got that. And then when we do it, you see how simple it is. All you do is, using this row of numbers, you take whatever decimal you're given, and you simply work from left to right and say, can I subtract the number in this row of figures that I'm at right now from the remainder that I have? See, I told you. <laughs> when you explain it, when you say it verbally, or even some, some of the books I've read over the years on subname, and it's like, wow, I, I knew what I was doing, and I wasn't sure I understood what they meant. But this is how crystal clear it's going to be for you. Let's do it. Let's just go ahead, and I'm just going to pick 45. We're going to do a couple of them live right across the screen, and I don't have anything pre-configured there, so to speak. So we'll just pull a number out of the sky, and we'll start with 45. And simply going from left to right, can I subtract the number in that top row of numbers from my current remainder, which my remainder right now is 45. I haven't subtracted anything from it yet. So can I subtract 128 from 45? And of course, the assumption here is we will not end up with a negative number. Okay, But I'm not going to say without being a negative number eight times every row we do. You'll get tired of hearing it. So can I subtract 128 from 45? Absolutely not. Can't even think about doing it, so I'm going to put a zero there. There are zero units of 128 in 45, if you want to get you know, that way about it, which is fine. 64. Can I subtract 64 from 45? No, can't do it. Put a zero there. See, it's easy. And we haven't even gotten to the ones where we can't do it yet. But here we go, 32. Can I subtract 32 from 45? Absolutely. Yes, I can. I can do it once. And tell you what. We'll just go ahead. We'll go ahead without doing it on the board here. We can keep up with that. 45 minus 32, what is that? It's 13. So I would simply say, can I now subtract 16 from 13? No, I can't. So I'm going to put a zero there. Can I subtract 8 from my current remainder, which is 13? Sure, I can. So I'm going to put a 1 there. And then it's 13 minus 8, and that equals 5. Can I subtract 4 from 5? Sure I can. So I'm going to put a 1 there. Now I'm going to subtract 4 from 5, and that leaves 1. So I can't subtract 2 from 1, so I put a 0 there. I can subtract 1 from 1, and that's it. And you'll also know here at the end, I do have a remainder at the end of this of 0. You've always got to have that. Two things to watch out for. First off, if you do this and you have a remainder at the end, you know, you subtract one from it and you say, okay, I got five left over, you've done something wrong and you got to go back because your remainder will always be zero when you go across the row. Also, notice there's a pattern here, right? Zeros and ones. There are no twos. If you put a two in here, you've reinvented binary, and we'd rather you not do that because it's working pretty well right now. So in all seriousness, if you have a two in here anywhere, then you need to go back and check your work. Speaking of checking your work, if you really want to check this quickly and make sure you've got it, let me show you exactly how to do that or tell you exactly how to do that. Just take the numbers that you have a one under and add them together and they should add up to the number you started with. 
So what does 32 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1 equal? 40, then 44, then 45. So you know you've gotten this one right. And see, there's nothing to it. This is a fundamental skill, and you've already got it. So this is taking a decimal figure and converting it to binary. What if we were given an entire IP address that we had to break down, that we had to take a dotted decimal IP address and convert it to a binary string? We're going to see exactly how to do that coming up next.